welcome in our first guest of the day on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. He is the college football preseason magazine guru, Phil Steele, ESPN college football insider and contributor as well. Phil, nice to have you back on the program. Hey, a real pleasure, guys. How are you doing today? Fantastic. Uh, we feel like uh, we're getting closer to college football because we have you on the program. And what's your typical day like right now, now that your uh, 2019 college football preview magazine has been released? Uh, this is living the life right now, guys. I tell you what, uh, you know, the magazine is six months of deadlines and stress. And then in the month of June, I basically go through every game for the upcoming season. So once again, you're on deadlines. But I've gone through every game for the upcoming season, projected who I had favored, who I had underdog, games I've had toss-ups. And now I'm just getting to talk football all day long, and I'm working like 40, 50 hours a week. It's hardly like even working, guys. <laughs> that's it? Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, let's talk about where you have BYU. You have them at number 38. Is that a preseason uh, ranking, or is that a uh, what you think they'll end up this year? That's where I think they're going to end up this year. And, uh, you know, when I look at BYU, they're a – a talented team. They've got 17 returning starters coming back. Not wild about the schedule. I mean, the first, the only team in the country to open up with four power five teams in the first four games. But despite the tough schedule and despite the fact that, you know, you can make a case for them winning or losing each of their first seven games, I think they come out of that first seven games, four and three, three and four, and then finish off real strong down the stretch. And but the amount of games they would win in that seven-game stretch, they're going to have to pull some upsets in there, maybe a USC, maybe a Washington. I think that gets them into the top 40 at the end of the year. ESPN College Football Insider Phil Steele on BYU Sports Nation. What's the realistic best-case scenario for BYU with a win-loss record in 2019? You want me to put on my uh, blue sunglasses Yes, here please. And, blue uh, goggles. <laughs> Well, I would have to say, you know, when I uh, – let's say absolute best case scenario, I'm a true dive blue BYU fan. There's no game on the schedule they can't win this year. I mean, there's every single game. The, the biggest underdog I have them in all year is the opening game against Utah, a six-point underdog. All the rest of the games, they're either favored or a slight underdog at that. So there's there's no unwinnable games at the schedule. So if you want to push the full gauntlet, and by no means am I calling for it, but – if I'm if I'm a BYU fan, uh, I, I would think that the best case scenario would be 11, 12 wins. Wow! You mentioned okay. you mentioned that you have nine sets uh, and two said BYU winning 10 plus. You said your main set calls for seven wins. We feel pretty similar. Somewhere between seven and nine is probably where BYU ends up. What do you think realistically ends up happening if this team is the 30th best team in the country? Uh, I came up with, uh, looking at the schedule, I'm going to go with eight wins. I think that, you know, you look at the early first four games, Utah at Tennessee, home to USC, home to Washington, maybe an underdog in all four, but a slight underdog. I think they can win one or two of those games. At Toledo, Toledo is my pick to win the MAC. Uh, the Mac West, I should say. They're tough at home. That's not going to be an easy game, but it's a winnable game. USF is a team that last year was probably the fakest team in college football. They opened up 7-0, and but they were beating a bunch of weaklings and barely beating them at that. When they played bowl teams, they got crushed. They are a better team this year. They've got the heat and humidity of Florida. That makes that one a toss-up game. The Boise State game, to me, is a toss-up game, but I think BYU can win that one at home. Got them a slight favorite in that. So when I look at the schedule, lots of toss-up games. I'm going to go with eight as my magic number for BYU this year. You mentioned that you expect the BYU offense to put up its best numbers since at least 2014. Why is that, Phil? Well, a big part of it is the quarterback, Zach Wilson. I'm very impressed with him down the stretch last year, especially in the bowl game. Uh, I think when you add in a running back like Tyson Williams from South Carolina to go along with Katoa, who I think Katoa is, could very well be the feature back this year as well. You look at the receiving core, uh, I love the tight ends led by Matt Bushman. Uh, they could run a lot of 12 personnel, and the offensive line looks like it's going to be solid. So I think the straw that stirs the drink, though, is quarterback Zach Wilson. And I think him playing anywhere near like he did in the bowl game, this is a BYU offense that's going to be much improved. And you feel like he's going to take a, a leap, perhaps. You mentioned that he could be one of the or should be one of the top quarterbacks in FBS. So you feel very highly about Zach Wilson. I do. I like what I saw of him last year. You know, last year you're looking at a true freshman that steps in and uh, completes 66% of his passes, tosses just three interceptions all year. 
Uh, Coach Sataki was only expecting perfection out of him in the bowl game, and that's what he got. And uh, I, I think when you look at Wilson's second year in that offense, now a true sophomore, you know, I'm going to go back and throw out another true freshman quarterback from last year, and that would be uh, USC's quarterback. Came in a little bit more highly rated coming out of high school, but going through the, rug- the rigors of a first-year starting quarterback, JT Daniels, 14 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. That's more like a true freshman. I expect big things out of Zach Wilson this year. Now to the defensive side of the ball for BYU. You project that the Cougars at 23 points allowed per game and 322 yards are going to be a pretty formidable defense. Uh, On the defensive side of the ball, why do you feel strongly that BYU can compete under Kalani Satake? You know, they lose some key players this year on defense, which is always a, a negative, like uh, Taki Taki at the linebacker spot, also Kafusi up front at the defensive end spot, who contributed eight and a half sacks. So you lose your leading tackler, you lose your top sack guy, you think there might be a step back. But when I look at BYU, you know, you look at the first of all, let's take a look at layer by layer. The defensive line, they actually returned 10 of their top 12 defensive line. And going through the team with Coach Sataki, like I do every year, I thought they had better depth on the D-line, much better depth on the defense overall last year than they had the previous year. And this year, that depth is solid once again. You go to linebacking court, you know, two of the projected returning starters last year, uh, Anderson and uh, Poa, both came in and uh, got injured. They played three and four starts combined. Uh, Anderson's back this year, by the way, when he was still the number seven tackler despite just four starts. So I think despite losing their top linebacker like they do to the Browns, the number three draft pick, that you're going to see their linebacking core be solid. Then the secondary, uh, you know, practically everybody's back. So that's a big plus there. So this is a veteran secondary, a veteran defense, eight starters back. Last year they only gave up 21.4 points per game. I'm calling for a slight regression to 23 points per game, but that's still pretty solid, especially in today's game of hurry-up offenses. Kalani Sitake is entering his fourth season uh, as the head coach here. Nine and four, four and nine, seven and six. He's one game over 500. What are your impressions of uh, Kalani Sitake and the direction BYU is headed with him? You know, he's a guy that loves football, loves BYU. I think he's a guy that's uh, going to take BYU to the next step in the in the near future. I think uh, you know you'll go back to the the 2017 season that was a disaster but last year they got their footing on the right path i love the fact they went in and beat wisconsin on the road that was a huge win early in the season and i think a big reason that coach sataki's uh, here again this year so i, I like the, the job he's doing and i think you're going to continue to see byu's fortunes rise phil the conference realignment conversation has resurfaced thanks to uconn byu has been targeted as a good fit to replace the huskies along with army But my question is, who would benefit more from that scenario right now, the American Athletic Conference or BYU, to uh, have that partnership put in place? Uh, I think they both benefit for this reason. The American Conference right now is in a battle with the Mountain West for the top group of five conferences. I rate the American Conference ahead of the Mountain West right now. I think you throw in a BYU chip and replace that, replacing UConn, you're talking about putting the AAC clearly as the top group of five conference. And as they like to build themselves the uh, six power, the power six conference out there. But with BYU, it's tough playing this independent schedule for crying out loud. You know, four power five teams in the first four games. I think you'll see the win total increase for BYU if they get aligned in conference play and they're playing a set schedule and don't have to play some of these hellacious uh, road games in, or in early season games <laughs> like they are. So I, I think it could be a win-win situation. Which of the first four games, Phil, is the most winnable for BYU? Uh, I'm going to throw out both the USC and the Washington game. USC is a team that's going to be learning a brand-new offense uh, with the you know going to the pass-happy offense. Uh, They've got the skill, talent, there's no doubt about that. But we've seen USC play uneven in recent years, so they've got that opportunity. And then you look at the Washington game, and what I like about that, Washington only has two returning starters on defense, so they're rather young on that side of the ball. Washington's also playing some key games uh, early on in the season. So when they get to the, you know, they'll be coming off uh, Cal and Hawaii, having to travel to BYU with USC, Stanford on deck. They're in the middle of conference play, basically, and uh, I think that's going to make it difficult for them to win on the road. So I I think both chances are are very good for BYU in those. Okay, Phil, we've uh, got the magazine ourselves. We absolutely love it. How can people get it if they would like it as well? 
Well, I appreciate that, guys. Today's the official day. It is on the newsstands, finally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we, yeah, we come out later than everybody else, but uh, it was allowed us to capture all that the May transfer portal stuff. So I think we got the latest rosters, and uh, it's a big, a big thing for me. Now, you can go to Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Books A Million, CVS, Target, Walgreens, public, places like that. All I ask, if you don't know the magazine, pick up a copy, open it up. If you're a casual football fan, you'll put it right back down. Way too much information. But if you're a football fan or a hardcore football fan, you're going to say, I need this thing. You're going to pick this book up, take it home, and be a reader for, for the next 20 years. So uh, it's it's available at all the newsstands today. If you don't find it there, go to philsteel.com. That's S-T-E-E-L-E, philsteel.com. Phil, it's great to catch up with you. Uh, good luck with your slower 40 to 50 hour week of work schedule. Yeah, it's pretty easy this time of year. Really enjoying it. Great talking football with you guys today. All right, Phil. Thanks so thanks, much. Phil.